Chelsea's tactics are under scrutiny after the death of a fan at yesterday's football derby. The discovery of a man's body has raised questions about the policing of the incident and whether or not the containment of the crowd, the technique known as kettling, might have been a major factor. Lisa Kennedy, the officer in charge of police operations when both the disorder and murder took place, will be making a statement later today. In the meantime, more complaints are coming in from members of the public. They want a scalp. Yours or mine. Fingerprint and DNA on this, but unfortunately no database match for either. And to make things even more tricky, it's only a partial print. Someone had wiped their hand off, but didn't do a very good job of it. So the body was found during the mop-up when we uh, filtered the fence. That was at 6pm. Now, obviously, we'll know more after the post-mortem, but the best estimate is that he'd been dead between two and a half and three and a half hours. Victim's been identified as Youssef Hanouche, 41 years old. Lebanese, not Asian, as the press has been claiming. Nationalised British. He was married, had a daughter, and he worked in um, a laundry. Yeah, it's an industrial outfit on Carver Street. They, uh, they service hotels and restaurants, that sort of thing. We're coming at this from a stand-in start. Was this a hate crime, race or religion? In her initial statement, the wife said he was on his way to the match, so can we put his death down to team rivalry? We're going to need all the CCTV and everything taken by the police photographers on the day. The Hanouche family won't be in great shape, but we need to keep talking to them. And counselling them. Yeah, so FLO? Yeah, Roger. Sounds good. OK, go. OK, so CCTV, a priority then. Divide up into teams, work backwards from the likely time of death and forwards from the earliest sighting you can get. On his street, in the tube, or wherever. Needle in the haystack. Is what we're looking for. Good to have you back, Sergeant Stone. Is there any evidence that the death was football-related? None. But that's what the press will say. Well, they are saying. Yeah, along with taking side bets on race and Islamophobia. But it was a football crowd. Rival fans close enough to spit. That's your guess? Well, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck. Yeah, OK. And if the press think it's football-related, they won't let it go. We need a result. Press conference? Yeah, late morning. Both of us? Look, Jack, I know we've had our differences in the past. Close enough to spit. <laughs> exactly. But we do need to be together on this one. I know that. So, yes, both of us. Right, you show the broadsheets, I'll do the tabloids. Common touch. Tragedy. Yusuf was a good man, a good manager. He's popular. Sure. Well, he wasn't the life and soul. He did his job. I never had no complaint. Come on! No fun there! Honey me! What about work conflicts, that kind of thing? Conflicts? What kind of conflict? Arguments, people falling out no, for any reason. No, there was nothing like that. He managed the shop floor. Him and Karen. Good team. No problems either of them. We need to speak to Karen. She called in sick today. Need her address and phone number. Sure. It happened at the football, didn't it? That's what the papers are saying. If it's not the football, it's some other excuse. Some bloke got stabbed in my street a couple of months back. Why? Because he said something. You know, he said something. They're all carrying blades nowadays. There you go. Karen Mills. Address, landline, mobile, it's all there. Thank you. You reckon you'll catch him then, whoever did it? That's the plan. Yeah. You're not usually that lucky, though, are you? He always went to the match. Away games, too. Big fan, then. I think he just wanted something for himself. Some men go fishing, don't they? Play snooker. We did things as a family, too. We had a good marriage. A marriage that worked. Do you remember what time he left for the match? No. Uh, 
Around one, I expect. I was at the supermarket. Which route did he take, do you know? I mean, bus or tube? Did he go with mates? On his own. But he could have met up with other people. Other people? Um, I, I don't know. Other fans, people he saw regularly at matches. I don't know. What about friends from work? I, I don't know. It was football. I can arrange counselling for you and Yara. We have friends. The press office have called it for 10.30. Most of the broadsheets will be there and all of the tabloids. I think there'll be three main areas for discussion. Our handling of the disturbance, knife crime. Whether it's racially motivated. Yeah. So I'll update them for five minutes, which will mostly consist of saying that it's too soon to say anything. And then we'll take questions, yeah? Yeah, turn and turn around. Yeah. Excuse me, Mum. Sir? Can I have a word? This is not a good time. Yes, Mum, I'm sorry. Sir? I'll catch up with you. What? We've got Yusuf Hanoush from when he got on the train on his way to the match, and he's here in the crowd that we had to contain on Millas Road. So there's no one to go then? Yeah, and there were before. We've got it on tape. Several instances of aggression and confrontation from the same mob. Is this police footage? No, this is all CCTV that we got on the day. This was taken on a mobile phone and sent to local TV. They wanted a fee for it, and they turned it over to us. And this is when we went in to help the woman who'd collapsed. This is the start of the dispersal. Inspector Smith was setting up the filter cordons, but there was just too many to hold. So we assumed that Yusef and the other guys broke out now, somewhere in that lot. Next time we see them, here. This is the street leading to the alley where the body was found. The chase van? Yeah. The. Next up, this. This is where he was killed? Yeah. Now we don't see the victim again, but we do see him. I wasn't sure at first, so I asked Sergeant Masters to take a look. I've, um... Seen him in the front office several times waiting for his mother. Lisa Kennedy's boy. Mark Kennedy, yeah. Gentlemen, my name's Commander Lisa Kennedy. I'm sorry to keep you all waiting today. Sir? Well, you better bring him in. barrage of questions about football hooligans and knife culture and police tactics. What's this? Mark has been identified as one of three individuals who were involved in a scuffle with Yusuf Anoush during the containment. Now, he and the others were apparently seen chasing Yusuf into the alley where his body was found later. This is Mark emerging from the alley. I've ordered his arrest on suspicion of murder. They've gone there now. Which, uh, to my house? Well, I assume that's where he'll be, yeah. 
Okay, um, can you, can you delay the search? Um, I, I'd like to be there. Two hours, no more. Look, uh, I'll try and keep the press away as long as I can. <sighs> they are going to love this. You're in for a tough ride. Look, do you think he killed this man? I don't know. I have to go with the evidence. Because I'm telling you right now, he didn't. I think you should look. You tell me I had an alternative. It's circumstantial. Cumulative. So you've made up your mind? No, I haven't. Then look for innocence rather than guilt. There'll be no prejudice from me, I can assure you. Look, uh, I've got a boy and he's had a few problems. Okay, Jack, yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Governor, hey, come over and look at this. Uh, Sidden Road is where Karen Mills lives. She's the co-manager of the laundry where Yusef Anoush worked. That's right near Stratton Parlour. And his Oyster card shows he always got off at that stop on match days, right? Yeah, uh, and another thing, Roger says that his missus said that he's always used to go to the away games. He clearly didn't look. Uh, he got off at Stratton Park every week. There. Karen Mills, five recent calls to her from his mobile. Three on the day of the match. We need to have a word. Night and Mel, you can do that. Yeah, we'll go. Sir. Right, well, you'll all be aware that uh, Mark Kennedy's been arrested on suspicion of murder. I'm going to do my best to keep publicity to a minimum, but once the press find out, there'll be a feeding frenzy, so uh, let's all be aware of that, eh? Sir. OK, we need to identify these two. Top priority. Potential accomplices, definite witnesses. So let's see what we can get from facial recognition. Terry, can you get an update from forensics on the murder weapon? I know Eddie said we got a partial print on the handle, but now we've got a suspect in custody. A DNA profile would be very useful. Yes, boss. Right, let's get active. She phoned in sick. Oh, she's either too sick to get out of bed or she's taking a piss. She's not sick, she's bunked off work. Try and move on. Hello? Hello, Karen Mills? Oh, charming. How could it be anyone? No, you've got that police voice thing. Why didn't you get the telephone unit to run a Yeah, place? I'm on it. Great minds. phone images of my dad. And those guys giving him a hard time. I know that, yes. My last sight of him. Internet's a wonderful thing. Very democratic. People call us Paki, though now some say Muslim shit. We're Lebanese Christians. Don't suppose it would make a difference if they knew that. People who talk like that, they're a minority. They say packy and spit this minority. Did you ever go to the football with your dad? I don't like sport. But he went every week, right? Something for himself. Back level. I wondered where you'd gone. I went to see friends, eh? Needed to talk. Some progress. We've made an arrest. I ought to advise you before this interview starts that on my advice, my client will be making no comment. I would also like to ask why he is here, given that you've no evidence against him. You've been advised of our reasons for detaining your client, Mr. Pryor, and they stand. CCTV footage of my client in a crowd hardly seems to me to constitute significant evidence. 
There's more footage. I'm now showing exhibit TP1, which is CCTV footage of a civil disturbance and related events which have been logged and dated. Mark Kennedy appears in several incidents. And I'm now going to ask Mr. Kennedy to expand on this footage which we're all looking at. Now, perhaps we could start with that day. How did he get involved in these events? No comment. Yes. The CCTV footage that you withheld, Superintendent. Why wasn't I shown this under the normal rules of disclosure? Well, there's nothing in law that says I have to disclose everything to you at any given time, Mr. Pryor. Mark, you seem to be there with friends. Who are they? No comment. The footage shows a disturbance involving you, two others, and a man we know to be Yusef Hunush. Could you tell us something about that? No, no comment. Okay, we're looking at footage of you and two others running down the street, apparently in pursuit of Mr. Hunush. Mr. Hunush runs down this alley, out of sight, followed by you and the two others. Okay, and now. We're seeing yourself emerging from the same alley. The time record tells us that it's half an hour later. So, could you confirm that you've seen this footage, please? No comment. We're talking about a murder here, Mark. We need to hear from you. What happened? Who were these other guys? This was half an hour later. What were you doing during that time? What happened in the alley? What happened, Mark? I thought I made it plain that my client will not be answering questions at this time. Mark? No comment. Mark Kennedy deleted his calls and texts, but got this from the service provider. Two calls at 12.20 and 12.30, not that significant, but then there are ten calls to the same number over a 30-minute period. What time was the CCTV? When they were chasing Hanush down the alley, 3.22. This is just after. Then there's a gap of ten minutes. He sends three texts, then he resends them. Well, he was worried, wasn't he? He'd lost them. Do we know who they are? The calls and texts were to Peter Gordon Robbins, and we got this guy from facial recognition, Dean Pollitt. He's got form, possession of a Class A drug, and driving when disqualified. I've already sent two arrest teams down, but um, there's something else. This number is Commander Kennedy's. Yeah, she took a call from him during the containment. He wanted to know if she could get him out, but of course she couldn't. It's not that call, sir. 1555. That's just after the estimated time of death. I'll tell them to tread carefully. See, the press is still here. Yeah. Oh. I need to talk to you. You mean interview me? There's no way around it. I know. Okay. Come through. He spoke to Mark yesterday during operations. He was in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He called during the containment, you know that. Did you hear from him again? No. At 3.55. Oh, yes, yes, he, he called and hung up or was in a bad reception area. I picked it up in the voicemail later. So what did he say? Well, nothing. I bet he was on my received calls list. I didn't think anything of it. That was after Hanush was killed. Before the body was found. You appointed Mark's barrister? Yeah, Simon Pryor. He's good. He knew about the CCTV footage. I mean, he hadn't seen it, but he knew what was coming. Which is why all we got from Mark was no comment. What do you expect me to say? No comment. Do you recognise these guys? Yeah, they were with them, right? The ones we saw on CCTV. Yeah, they were in the crowd, and then they were seen later chasing Hanoush. I used to know all these friends when he was younger. You know how it is, Jack. So, you spare a minute. Thanks. 
They found a partial print on the handle of the murder weapon. We just got the forensic report back from D.I. Manson. It's a good match for Mark. Pollock's up on the fourth floor. You cover the back stairs, we'll cover the front. Dean Pollock. I've got him, I've got him. He's on the back stairs going up to level four. of murder. You do not have to say anything. It may hold your defence if you do not mention. When questioned something which you later on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Is it? Yeah, it must be. Ah. I can't see. What was it? Just keep blinking. I can't see properly. My eyes are burning. What was it? Stop engine. It's very dust. Mm. All right, come on. Backside in first. Watch your heads. Legs round. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah, why? I mean, I've seen you do eyes before. Yes. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I was just. Uh, I had an accident when I was a kid. Brought it all back to me. You know what I mean? I accident doing what? Messing around on the roof, you know what it's like, as a kid. What happened? I thought I was Superman. I fell off the roof. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Right. You sure about that? OK, thanks a lot. Telephone unit. Got a trace on Karen Mills' mobile. Guess where? What? She went back to her flat. Apparently she was there all the time. Oh, nice one, Karen. Did you go to my work? First, yes. I'm chucking a sickie. Don't let on. Because of Yusef Hanoush. Yeah. It's well upsetting. You were involved with him. Who told you that? Your number on his dial calls list. More than once. And he always got off at Stratton Park, which is just up the road. Wasn't going to the football, was he? <sighs> it started through work. I mean, that's where you meet people, isn't it? We got on. He used to be a teacher, knew all sorts of stuff. I liked talking to him. It wasn't just talk, though. No. Every match day? Well, yeah. He'd come round for sex, you know? And a coffee and a chat. He was different, Yusuf. He'd listen when I said something. Men don't, mostly. Can you tell us where you were yesterday between 3.30 and 4.30? I was here, wasn't I? Waiting for him to show up. Can anyone confirm that? He didn't come round to have a cup of tea with the neighbours. I tried to call him a few times from here. If you've got his mobile, you'll find the number. 
Okay, Karen. Do you recognise these guys? No, are these the ones? We need to talk to them. Okay. Well, if you think of anything, can you give us a call? She won't have to know, will she? Be a shame if she did. I liked him and that, but uh, it didn't add up to nothing. Not really. Everybody, listen up, thank you. We've got another suspect in custody, Dean Pollitt. So, what's the story on Peter Robbins? We've got his address through phone records. No one in, tried his friends, parents, no luck. Is he known to us? No, we've run his picture through MetBats. And? Nothing so far. So what do we know about Dean Pollitt? Uh, we're looking at his phone book now. Anything tasty? Apart from the dealers and the prozies? Yeah, apart from them, yeah. Not really. We searched his flat? Yeah, three grams of coke and some porn bookmarked on his computer. Legal? So far, but we're looking at his hard drive. I think he's telling me how to chat with him. OK. Are you going to interview him, sir? No, I want you to do it. Take one of the arresting officers. I want to keep the ball rolling with Mark Kennedy. He should know about the partial fingerprint by now. Sorry? I told Lisa Kennedy. She'll have told his brief. And Mark will have had time to think about it. Calculated risk. OK. Lisa Kennedy asked me to look for the innocence in her son, not guilt. So I want to keep looking. You think you'll find it? Long odds. You were in the police containment operation. They kettled us. Do you recognise this man for the tape? I'm showing Mr. Pollitt exhibit LT1, an image of Yusef Hanoush. No comment. What about these men? Mark Kennedy. Peter Gordon Robbins exhibits LT2 and LT3. No comment. Perhaps you could tell us something about your involvement in yesterday's events. No comment. All right. I'm now showing Mr. Pollard. I want to make a complaint against that bitch that sprayed me. And I went blind. You'll have an opportunity. And this one? Superman. You will have an opportunity to make any complaints later on. Now, when my officers approached you at your address, you ran off. Could you explain that? Do you know he wears his panties over his tights? You've been shown CCTV footage of yourself and two other men chasing Yusef Hanoush. Now, at one point, you ran into an alley. Mr. Hanoush's body was later found in that alley. Can you explain what happened, Mark? No comment. Mr. Hanoush died of a stab wound. We later found a knife in a drain in that alley. Now, do you have any knowledge? No comment. Your fingerprint was found on the handle of the knife. Mr. Pryor, I previously warned your client that his refusal to respond could harm his case if he goes to court. I've advised my client about this matter, but I would like a moment to consult... No, I wasn't there. I wasn't there when it happened. So who was? I would like to consult with my client. You'll have an opportunity to do that later, Mr. Pryor. The other guys, Mark, Dean Pollitt and Pete Robbins, were they there? I, I don't know any details. They were your friends. Pete is. I don't know Dean all that well. He's Pete's mate. Look, it all came out of nothing. The, the police weren't letting anyone go. Next thing I know, Dean starts a fight with this guy. Why? I don't know. He, he didn't need a reason. You seem to be involved. And so did Peter Robbins. No, Pete was trying to stop it. I was just getting pushed around. The next thing I know, the cordon breaks and everyone starts running. You were running after Yusuf Anoush. No, Dean was. Me and Pete, we were just running. And the four of you ran into the alley. What happened in the alley, Mark? I ran through, I came out the other end and I kept on running. I, I didn't even realise they weren't with me. So you didn't think to stop and see what happened? No. Your fingerprint is on the knife. After a while, I phoned Pete. He told me that Dean and the Asian guy had a fight in the alleyway. The Asian guy got stabbed. He said it was bad. So I went back. Why? To see if he was alive. To see if he needed help. Look, when I got there, I could see he was dead. The knife was on the ground nearby. I, I gave it a wipe and I... I threw it down the drain. Why did you do that? 
So I thought the knife would lead to Dean and then Dean would lead to me. And you couldn't be involved because of your mother? Can I see him? Under supervision. So what happens next? We need to find his friend, Peter Robbins, see if his evidence agrees with Mark's. And if you can't find him? Then Mark's facing a murder charge. Yes, I think we can all agree on that. I did it to protect... Don't say that you did it for me. Don't even go there. I'm so sorry. Jack Meadows believes you or not. Peter Robbins. You took your time. So now they've arrested another man? Yes. Is this progress? We hope so. These men, have they said why my husband deserved to die? They're being questioned. Oh, good, 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 good. We're gathering evidence, Jamila. It is looking good. Is it? For you, maybe. I don't think anything is looking very good for us. There are people to be told. Relatives in Lebanon. People all thought we had the perfect life here. Yeah, but it wasn't perfect, was it? You knew, didn't you? About Karen Mills. Is that her name? They met at the laundry. I knew that. A good marriage. There's no way you said a marriage that worked. It did work. You wouldn't understand. I think you'd better tell me about the knife. He was mugged. It happens all the time around here. He reported it, but I don't assume it made the crime figures. He took his wallet, his phone... It didn't hurt him really, just roughed him up a bit. But he got scared. Who <laughs> wouldn't be? So he started carrying a knife. I told him it was stupid. He said it even things up. So he'll be not guilty, this man who killed Yusuf. It makes things more complicated. We need to find out exactly what happened. And Yusuf is not here to give his version. Dean was not real, mate. He was a football mate. So I knew him. 
Why was he chasing Mr. Hanoush? Something that got said in the crowd. I don't know what. He went mental. What happened down the alleyway? Mark ran off. Then cope with the guy. And we're going at it. And what did you do? I was shouting at thing to stop it. But he was getting really stuck in. I saw the guy go down. He was stabbed. Yeah, with his own knife. No. They both had knives. We spun Polly's flat. Yes, Gov, we did. Didn't find a knife on him when he was arrested. No, there wasn't one at the scene. Maybe he got rid of it later. Talk to the pathologist about the stab wound. Might tell us something. Sir? OK, thanks. Sir, pathologist confirms the wound indicates a hunting knife. Saw ridged up a blade. Nothing like the knife that was found at the scene, then? No, and we haven't found it here. Where was he arrested? Uh, back of the flats in Block Town. We we'll searched the area, sir. How did he get there? Uh, he went over the roof, sir. I chased him. Chased him over these gantries, and suddenly he was just gone. How? Oh. Well, I don't know exactly. He just seemed to disappear. Let's keep looking, eh? Show him, Mr. Pollitt, Exhibit JM1. Do you recognise this knife? No. So you're saying this is not your knife? Never seen it before. Well, the initial forensic tests show that the handle of this knife bears a full set of your fingerprints. And I'm quite confident that further tests will prove positive for DNA. Blood particles found on the blade of this knife have been tested against the DNA and blood group of a Mr. Youssef Hanoush. I'm just going to give him a bit of a smack, you know? And then he gets his knife out. By he, you mean Yusuf Hanoush, am I right? The Paki, yeah. Pakistani, Asian. So you have a bit of an attitude here to black people, Asian people. Yeah, look, here we go. Well? He was disrespecting me, simple as that. So you stabbed him? It was self-defence. You said you were going to give him a bit of a smack. Why was that? He said something. Said something? Yeah. What did he say? Get off me or something. Why do you say that? We was all penned up, people on top of each other. And then what? Give him a bit of a whack. Well, because he said something? Yeah. And then what? Well, he only whacked me back, didn't he? And I won't have him that. And then your lot decided to let us out, and we was out running, me after him. Yeah, you were with two other people. Yeah, Pete and some mate of his. Then he went up the alleyway, Pakistani. I caught up with him, and then he gets his knife out. Do you know his name? Pete Robbins' friend? No. Um, Mark something. For the tape, it's been previously established that the man referred to was Mark Kennedy. Do you recognise this knife? I'm showing Mr Pollitt exhibit JM1 for the second time. Self-protection. So let's be clear, you're now identifying this knife as your own. Yeah. And you use this to stab Youssef Anoush. It could have gone either way, it could have been me lying on the ground. Did you stab him? Yeah. So what about the other man? People shouting at me. Yeah? What's he saying? 
leave it, forget it, that sort of thing. What about Mark? He ran off. What, before or after you stabbed Yusuf Anouche? He was well out of it, he was long gone. Okay, to be clear, Mark Kennedy had gone when the fight occurred during which Yusuf Anouche was stabbed. Yeah. Terminated at 17.37. I'm barely marking his own recognizance. Court appearance should be next week, I think. What will it be? Perverting the course of justice. Although it wasn't Paul that's knife, he threw down the drain. But as far as I knew, he was still concealing evidence. But he went back to see if he could help the guy. Yeah, and that should go in his favour. And of course, the, uh, the jury will have a view. No previous character witnesses and yourself, of course. 18 months? If he's lucky. But he's still better than facing a murder charge. I asked you to look for innocent, sir. I know that must have gone against the green. Why? No, no I, I don't mean it like that. I mean, you know, you... You could have taken a back seat, just done the admin, but... You went out of your way, you got involved. I, I'm saying thank you. Well, you don't have to. Well, I'm saying it anyway. By the way, I never told Mark's solicitor about the fingerprint. I thought so. Why? Well, I was trying to decide whether it was the right thing to do as a mother or the wrong thing to do as a police officer. And? I still don't know. At least uh, the press have been told. There's going to be a call outside the main entrance. So I've organised you a car out of the bag. He saw you were self-defence, but he was carrying a knife. No jury's going to go for it. You'll have to go to court. Well, I'll need a statement from you and Yara explaining the fact that you have carried a knife. But no, you don't have to go to court. You might want a victim impact statement read out. What is it? Well, something written by you telling the court how you and Yara have been affected by Yusuf's death. I see. No. No, I don't think I want to do that. Roger, you have been very tactful, very sympathetic. But I think you should go now. Please go. Well, it could have been worse, a lot worse. I know. That's yours, by the way. No. No, it's not. statement but it's also a personal one now to begin with we now know that the death of Yusuf Hanoush did not occur as a result of police action taken during yesterday's disturbances nor was it a hate crime now three men have been arrested in connection with the death and further statements will follow I have to tell you at this time that one of the men arrested was my son Now, although he was not directly involved in Mr. Hanush's death, his actions have resulted in a charge of perverting the course of justice. I'm, I'm not making any more statements at this time. No, I'm all right, Tom. Really? Listen, I was saying that. You want to tell me what just went on? We're playing best buddies with a dealer. His supplier chops you out of line and you say no. What's happening to do? He's going to do rumble us if we That's exactly what I think would have happened. What's your problem? Come off it, Mickey.